was very dark. It was really dark. Cindy cried out to me. Uh, she said it's got me. Uh, and then, and then sh she was gone. And the only help I could get was by screaming Cindy's name. Screaming and screaming her name. What happened to Cindy Waldron is, in a word, terrifying. A crocodile attack on a remote Queensland beach. The story of how it happened, of what her best friend did in the moments afterwards, is extraordinary. I imagine this is a uh, difficult beach to return to. Yep. Yep. Leanne Mitchell has never spoken publicly about what happened here, and it's taken a lot of courage to return. I noticed you came with this photo today. You carry this around a lot. I do. I do, it goes everywhere with me. I just want to take her home. I just want to take her home. I don't want to leave her here. Her story is at the centre of a fierce debate on crocodile numbers. There's lots of them out here. Lots. Across northern Australia, the original inhabitants are coming back. Well, hang on, back up, back up. And with them are the stories nightmares are made of. If the numbers aren't controlled, there will be more deaths, without a doubt. Crossing the wild frontier of Northern Australia, we found more crocs than ever in unexpected places. We have the largest crocodiles on planet Earth. It's kind of like Jurassic Park. And also a great divide between those who want to protect them People like Terry Irwin. Should we lose crocodiles, everything in Australia would change. And those who want to protect us. It doesn't matter your age, your sex or your gender. You know, it's, you just meet. to imagine that 50 years ago we almost hunted the saltwater crocodile off the map. Here they were down to just 3,000. Something drastic was needed so in the 70s it became illegal to hunt and kill crocodiles. Now it was effective, it was more effective than they could have imagined. Here in the Northern Territory the numbers are up over 100,000. They are bigger, there's more of them and the last thing they're worried about is us. Nowhere is the dramatic rise of the saltwater crocodile more evident than on the Mary River at night. Ooh. When Graham Webb and Charlie Manilis first came here, crocodiles were in the crosshairs. The Mary River was the place to go for a swim. Big guys, big guys. Today, it's home to the densest population of crocodiles on the planet. Graham, they say what you don't know about crocodiles isn't worth knowing. <laughs> well, I've been, I've been working on crocodiles for a long time. But here he comes, here he comes. Yes. Look at this, at least four metres. That's oh. a big croc. The average animal when I first started was maybe this long. Tiny. Tiny. Because there were very few big ones. But now, the average size is probably, you know, Three metres, maybe, two and a half to three metres. So in the daytime, when we came down this river, we saw three crocs, and now in the night, I think I've lost count after 30, maybe 40. Here he comes, here he comes. Yes. Look at this. There's crocs everywhere through here. That's true. 
Right. That's what we tried to achieve, and we got it. <laughs> to get a closer look at this incredible animal... Looks like a monster. ..the team catches and hauls in a big male. I jump in? Jump in, sir. All of a sudden, this boat seems very small. He is huge. He's got the end of his tail missing, but we take it right up to the snout. Right up to the end of the end of the snout, level with the end of his snout. Yep. So that's about 3.8 metres. Yep. It used to be really rare, you know, and they were hidden away, and you never saw them. But now, this size croc is pretty common. What happens if you come across something like this in the wild? You just wouldn't want to be in the water with something like this trying to, to get you, you know. Or you wouldn't have a, much of a chance, I'm afraid. When was the first time you met Cindy? We were at school together. School? Yeah. School yeah, friends? High school, yep. She was 14 and I was 15. She was so loyal, so loving, so kind, so generous, so funny, so thoughtful. Cindy was the sister that I chose for myself. I always wanted a sister and she was it. Cindy Waldron, Leanne Mitchell, inseparable. Even when Leanne moved to Cairns, the girls were always there for each other. Oh, I'm not very good at this, but anyway, hello, hope you're good. When Leanne was diagnosed with breast cancer, it was Cindy who was with her for every painful step. Love you, I'm okay, I'm much better, I'm alive. She even flew up to be by her side when Leanne faced her toughest decision, a double mastectomy. Her life was always crazy busy. And I said, love, you just can't, you don't have time. And she said, mm, mm doesn't work like that. Does not work like that. I'm gonna be there whether or not, you know, whatever you say, I'm gonna be there. So she came the night before and I remember, I've got a photo that's the screensaver on my phone. So we were huddled there together and it's so apparent on my face that I'm scared stiff and Cindy's got a look on her face, which is... <sighs> she just looks like she's got it. She's got it. I've got you, babe. I've got you. It's OK. I'm here. With Cindy's support, Leanne completed the surgery. The treatment, and eventually the news, was good. Leanne was in remission. The girls were ecstatic and planned a weekend away. Just the two of them. Sounds like it's almost a celebration for both of you. You're in remission. It's a girl's weekend. That's what we were doing. We were celebrating the end of my cancer treatment. And we were both in a great place to be able to move on. Leanne and Cindy packed up the car and drove north to the Daintree rainforest. They were staying at a friend's place on the beach. This far north is remote, beautiful, and in the heart of croc country. This is where Leanne and Cindy were heading, Thornton Beach, and it's right in the middle of the Daintree rainforest. It really is a little piece of paradise. People come here because of its untouched beauty. There's no mains electricity. They operate off rainwater tanks. There's no mobile phone reception. And critically, there's very few people. It's perfect until something goes wrong. We were just so full of this joy of being together in that place, alone. Because we'd been friends since we were little girls, when it was just her and I, it was like being little girls again. It's late at night in the remote Daintree rainforest. Childhood friends Cindy and Leanne have checked into their room and they are celebrating. Leanne has beaten her battle with breast cancer. Both girls are in a good place. We just wanted to run around, and that was exactly what we did. And in the process of doing that, we ended on the water's edge. 
We ended up on the water's edge. How deep? Here to here. It was really dark. Cindy's back was to the water and mine was to the beach. And we were laughing. <laughs> and then Cindy cried out to me. And uh, she said, it's got me. And I, I thought, I, I thought, she, I thought that it was just that fright that you get when you're in the water and something like seaweed brushes you. And so I put my arms out and she took my arms and I said, I've got you, Pat. I've got you. It's OK, I've got you. And she was holding me and I was holding her. We were pulled. We, we were pulled. It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. You were holding her by both hands? Both arms. We had our arms wrapped around each other. The force was incredible. And in that, I lost one arm. I lost this arm. I'm still holding her, and it stopped. We stopped. And we'd travelled a big distance. We were now... I couldn't feel the ground any longer. Couldn't feel anything under my feet. Deep water. And I've put my hand out. I realised there was something. And I put my hand out, and I felt the top of its head. Then I started trying to punch and trying to hit and trying to fight. And I was screaming and just trying to fight. And then all of a sudden, we were taken again with the same amount of force. We, we were taken. Still hanging on to each other. By this arm. And I held on as much as I could. I was clawing onto her arm and I was trying to get the other arm up to try and grab her and I couldn't, I couldn't and then sh she was gone. I dived down and I couldn't see anything and I was feeling around. Frantically trying to feel and diving down and trying to feel for anything, I was trying to feel and I had to recognise what it was. And I knew I had to get help. I knew that Cindy's best chance would be for me to get help quickly. But up here, help is a long way away. And first, Leanne needs to swim back to the beach. I wanted to help. And the only help I could give was by screaming Cindy's name. <laughs> screaming and screaming her name. <laughs> Screaming for her to come back. He thought that if you yelled loud enough, you'd find her. She'd come back. <sighs> Leanne is taken to hospital. She has puncture wounds to her arm. She is suffering from shock. Days later, a four metre crocodile is found and killed. Inside are the remains of Cindy Waldron. The two of us. <laughs> we always talked about how we'd be those little old ladies together, laughing and sharing our things. <laughs> we would always, always be together. And now we're not. If you haven't got a little bit of fear yet, you'll end up getting killed. Catching problem crocodiles like the one that took Cindy is a dangerous business. In Darwin, you call Roger Matthews and his son Brody. When they talk about croc country, this is it. This, um, the Mary River is the most crocodile infested place on earth. Their job is to catch, kill or relocate 
the crocs that nobody wants to go near. Professional croc catcher. How does a person end up with that as a job title? Good question. I see there was a need for it. And also, I love doing it, so we're just filling in that very small niche. Brody, you take the pump gun, mate. Roger and Brody work on one of the biggest properties in the Territory. Hang on, back up, back up. Talk to the owner, and he'll tell you through gritted teeth. Crocs cost him more than $200,000 a year in dead animals and fencing. Denim, do you want to go and grab that rope? I think the only fear that a crocodile has is man. Because once a crocodile gets up big enough, there's nothing out there that's going to tackle it. <laughs> well done. Mate, do you want a job? <laughs> but that's what makes it, you know. You survive it, you think, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Yes, we have something. The noise is coming from him. <laughs> him angry. Looking at the size of him, he's, he's probably about three and a half metres. He's caught in here. But we also got to watch out. There's nothing to say there's not another one just off. So that's why Brody's riding shoddy here. And while we move it out, it's also a dangerous time because we've got to bring it out through the front of the track. With Brody on the lookout, Roger needs an extra pair of hands. <laughs> Okay, pull that tight. There. Yep, that's good. 99% of crocodiles will fight the rope and yep. try and pull away. 1% will charge. So if he charges, you charge. I charge, we all charge. <coughs> all right. Give him a bit of gentle encouragement. Okay. It doesn't matter the size of the crocodile, I still get a buzz when I see one and yeah, I, I don't think I'll ever get sick of it. Let's see if we can pull him up even. Roger and Brody have their hands full. Hold him there. Yeah. They're relocating as many problem crocs as they can, but it's hardly making a dent in the surging population. Okay. If something isn't done, if the numbers aren't controlled, what are we going to see? More deaths. <laughs> Any matter of time, we're going to lose more people. I mean, if someone dies in a car accident, that's still horrible, but it's different when you're being devoured. And it's going to happen a lot more. Terry, you have a backyard full of crocodiles. That's not normal. No, it's not, but nobody <laughs> comes to visit, so it's really good security. <laughs> if crocodiles could pick a public relations agent, it would be Terry Owen. So this is Akko. All right, and we're safe here? We should be good here, so if he, if he swings, we'll move. Okay. But this is the largest crocodile we have at Australia Zoo. Terry knows more about Australian wildlife than just about anyone, but she had the best teacher. Oh, crikey! Steve's the real deal. He's a real-life action hero. The American fell madly in love with our most famous crocodile hunter, Steve Irwin. I've got a beautiful wife and a champion little daughter. A man known as the crocodile hunter, Steve Irwin, has died. He was killed in a marine accident. Steve's DNA is right through this place, and I imagine it must be a huge comfort in a lot of ways, but is there ever a time where it gets you? Mm. Every, every day it's difficult, and after 11 years, it's kind of like the grief goes from being a rock in your heart to walking beside you. It's just always there, and I never really know when it's going to hit me. For years, I had still had Steve's clothes in the cupboard. Do I miss him? Constantly. But I think I was so lucky to get my happily ever after. We started talking and we fell in love right there and then, and it hasn't changed. I married this great guy 
who was a stack of fun, and we went on all these adventures. It was just the most fantastic time of my life. I am a wildlife warrior, and I'll fight, fight to the death hey, for this. wildlife. Those adventures turned her into a household name here and overseas. And the family, including Bindi and a now very grown-up Robert, have made protecting animals their life's work. See, most people would see something terrifying. What do you see? You know, I see an animal that has evolved over 200 million years. I see a creature with a four-chambered heart like ours that can lower his heart rate to three beats a minute and then explode out of the water. I see an animal that can travel 1,500 kilometers in a single journey, swim nearly as fast as a dolphin, and is the most efficient predator, I think, on planet Earth. So when I'm this close to a crocodile, I'm in awe. The huge conservation effort from the Irwins is partly responsible for the current explosion in crocodile numbers. <laughs> Okay, you're right. <laughs> That's a crocodile. <laughs> on the other side of the fence is Australia's foremost expert on crocs, Graham Webb. He has a controversial solution to the croc problem. Trophy hunters paying money to local businesses and the government to shoot crocodiles. What would probably upset people is having rich Americans come here and trophy hunt on Australian soil. I wouldn't worry. Like, well, I can't see why that worries people. If it was a poor American, would it worry people? Graham argues big game safaris would actually generate money for landowners and the Northern Territory, instead of leaving it to croc hunters like Roger and Brody. Beautiful. If the difference is $10,000, like you pull the trigger, and you get $1,000, he pulls the trigger and you get $10,000. Well, I know we consider ourselves a clever country, but does it really matter? Like, when push comes to shove, does it really matter who pulls the trigger? Graham's an interesting person because he's been working with crocodiles his whole life in a consumptive manner. So Graham believes in consuming a crocodile to make a buck. So he's very interested in eating them, wearing them, and exploiting them by killing them. If there is a problem crocodile, if a crocodile is threatening humans, by all means, it should be removed from the system. But to have open slather safari hunting in some of the most remote places on planet Earth is a recipe for disaster. If you make it legal, it will be out of control. Back at the Daintree's Thornton Beach, where there had never been a croc attack before, there are now warning signs. The water's lovely, isn't it? It's warm. This is the place where Leanne Mitchell's closest friend, Cindy, was ripped from her arms as they walked in the shallows. You've got your feet on the ground, you've got the beautiful water around your legs. Yeah. I didn't realise you know, I didn't realise. Somebody just said to me the other day that they only need something like, you know, 30 centimetres of water or something. I didn't I, I wasn't. I wasn't aware of that. I didn't know that. There are horrific memories here, but then there's this. Out of focus, but it's from that night. The last photo of Cindy and Leanne, the two of them, together. I just want to take her home. I just want to take her home. I leave her here. And I wanted to... I wanted to feel what she felt. And I felt that's what I deserved. I know she'd want me to be happy. They say the good stuff that happens, I kind of attribute to her. I like to think that she's sending me the good stuff. Yeah. Leanne will never completely move on, but she's trying as much as possible to live with what happened. Not surprisingly, when it comes to croc numbers, she has a strong opinion. Do they need to be reduced in areas where people are going about the business of their lives, where the weather is beautiful year round? Yeah, and if it's going to prevent attacks and deaths, yeah. And if it's going to be in areas where we wouldn't ordinarily presume them to be, 
yeah, yeah, it's common sense, isn't it? <laughs>